Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tian de Jauger. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences and I will be your program director this evening. MEC Le Sufi, MEC of Education, Gauteng Department of Education, Dr. Barbara Ann Libero, UP Council Member in Gauteng Department of Health, Professor Cheryl De La Rey, Vice Principal, uh, Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria, um, the Acting CEO of Steve Biko Hospital, Dr. Matabula, our DVC for Research and Postgraduate Studies, Professor Stephanie Burton, other VIP members, uh, staff, students, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to, on behalf of the Faculty of Health Sciences, welcome you to our Prince Hof campus. Professor Cheryl De La Rey will do the official welcoming and um, I call on Professor De La Rey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen and invited guests. Before I begin, I would like to invite everybody to, if you can in those rather tight seats, to please stand and observe a moment's silence in memory of a great colleague, great scientist and great South African, Professor Bungani Mayosi. Thank you. May you rest in peace. In my capacity as the Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria, I'm really honoured to have this opportunity to welcome you to the 22nd lecture in the University of Pretoria's Expert Lecture Series. And I'm especially honoured to welcome the MEC of Education in Gauteng and Deputy Chair of the ANC, congratulations, uh, Mr. Panyazel Sufi. Welcome to the University of Pretoria and we look forward to working with you in your new role as well. I'm also pleased to have the opportunity to welcome our members of council, uh, the CEOs of our partner hospitals, CEOs of science councils, uh, alumni of the university, members of the media, and especially on this occasion, Dr. Rachel Satehe, Prof. Satehe's wife, his two sons and his brothers and sisters. We welcome your family and thank them for supporting you through your career journey. And all our distinguished guests and colleagues. I'm also very pleased to see so many private practitioners in the audience. And uh, we look forward to engaging with you on how we can work together after this lecture. On this occasion, ladies and gentlemen, I'm reminded of the often used phrase, that time flies. And certainly when I think about this lecture series, time has flown. As I said, this is our 22nd in an expert lecture series that we started in the year 2010. The main rationale for the series is our institutional commitment to making an impact locally and globally and ensuring that we conduct research that is of relevance to our society, our local communities, our national community, and beyond. So this lecture series is one of the ways in which we strive to ensure that the expertise of our academic leaders contributes to our society. It serves to provide a public platform for the University of Pretoria researchers to engage with the general audience on significant developments in their field of expertise, and particularly to focus on developments that may impact upon us in our future lives. I think this has become even more important in recent times. I'm sure you're familiar with the term post-truth. It's now used to describe the world in which we live in today, a time when objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion, 
And people often shape the opinions based on emotion and personal beliefs. And yes, false truths and false news is with us. But we are a university. And as a university, we subscribe to some basic scientific principles. Science in general, and universities in particular, are by our very nature associated with the pursuit of an objective truth. In the words of two scholars whose work I read recently, they remark that now than ever before, scholars and scientists must develop strategies to communicate the results of our research to the public as a means of challenging alternative facts and very importantly, influencing public policy making. The topics we have selected for our expert lecture series are always relevant to the issues of the day. Over the years, we have had lectures on human rights, stem cell research, sexual minorities, energy efficiency, the digital highway, or just but some, of, some examples. But tonight, we are here to learn about Theranostics. See it, treat it, an intriguing title. And our esteemed lecturer is Professor Mike Satehe, Professor and Head of Department of Nuclear Medicine at the Faculty of Health Sciences at the University of Pretoria and also at our Steve Biko Academic Hospital. Colleagues, distinguished guests, the escalating medical burden, medical economic burden, is something we are acutely aware of, particularly as we engage with our Gauteng Health Department. And we understand from the research that's been done, this escalation in the medical economic burden is in part attributable to the gap between, the diagnos between diagnostics and therapy. Nuclear me medicine is an area that's rapidly facilitating the shift from trial and error medicine to personalized medicine. And it holds great promise for improved patient outcomes. This is largely due to theranostics which is a term encapsulating the integration of diagnostics and therapeutics in the individualized management of disease. I understand this is called the see it, treat it approach, but I am about to learn more this evening. It's now my pleasure to introduce our expert this evening, Professor Mike Satehi. As you've heard, he's a professor and head of nuclear medicine uh, here at the University and at the Steve Biko Academic Hospital. He holds an MBCHB, an MMed, a PhD. He is at the forefront of specialist training in his field. Hence, he was honored by being elected as the President of the Colleges of Medicine of South Africa. He serves on the National Specialist Body, Examining Body for all medical disciplines. His research and leadership record has enabled him to be appointed as the chairperson of the Medical Research Council of South Africa. Internationally, he is the immediate past president of the International Society of Radio Labeled Blood Elements and past secretary, of, secretary general of the World Federation of Nuclear Medicine and Biology. He's also currently a member of the governing body of the World Association of Radiopharmaceutical and Molecular Therapy. Welcome. Prof. Satehi has performed several first radionuclide studies and traces to be applied to human beings. He's a man of several firsts, and therefore he's the recipient of many awards. The one I'd like to mention is the one bestowed upon him by his peers, his scientific peers, who have deemed him and his contribution to have made a sustained scientific contribution to the field globally. Prof. Satehi, I'm delighted to welcome you to address us this evening, and we look forward to learning from you. Welcome.
the Vice Chancellor, uh, MEC, the Dean, the VC, CEOs of various companies and the institutions, colleagues and friends, well, definitely protocol observed, as, 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 as it was mentioned by the uh, VC. Uh, indeed, uh, I would really want to take this moment to see how we can actually uh, acknowledge that it is about time that we move to uh, a theranostic medicine, which is an important aspect of medicine. So the outline of how I intend to take us through is to give the background about medical medicine generally, as uh, perhaps uh, 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 it might not be so clear how it goes, but in theranostics there are various applications. So what one will do is to give at least the bit on TB and HIV, what we can do there, and uh, on uh, dementia, and a little bit on cardiovascular, and of course uh, uh, targeted radionuclide therapy, neuroendocrine tumors, the skin cancer, breast cancer, and prostate. There are various cancers you can give, of course, uh, that that really would take us a long time, but to try and make an impact on what the department has done, given the people that are here, be the friends from my mentors that are here and the former deans, they will know what, why I chose this subject. It would be important to acknowledge the people that one works with. As you can see, the likes of the European Union and the Joint Research Cancer in, 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 in a Center in the Europe, it's very, very important. So is Ghent University, NTP, KUL. But the rest of the people that are named here, and then of course, we do have people from the CMSA in the form of Academic Registrar and the Medical Research Council and the NRFs, but I will not go through the list uh, at, at the moment. So it, it is important to see uh, DVC that indeed, as we do the theranostics, say, say it in the background, that there are people that we have trained and there are people that we are training and that it's, it's, as we do train them, we have to really uh, speak to the issue of, uh, of course, uh, uh, that if you educate the women, you really are educating uh, the nation, and, and that's what we are focusing on. <laughs> and, uh, that, that, that's very important uh, to, to do that. And of course, that, 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 uh, the, 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 the vice president of the CMSA is aware of that and, and knows why we are saying so. And clearly, you can see uh, my, former, my, my past trainees, the males are fewer. Uh, but, but, but we'll make a plan uh, to catch up with them, uh, and, and so that's, that's very important. So, and, and clearly, again, one has to acknowledge my uh, late parents, and do you see, this is the, uh, the, 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 see, this is the, the, the photo that I, I, I look at the most handsome in. That's why I choose the old, so at least people can see that at some stage I used to be handsome. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so. And of course, um, indeed, uh, uh, as, as, as the weather has taken its toll, this is who I am now. So, <laughs> nuclear uh, medicine, as you re really look at the energy in itself, as it really, uh, 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 Memcury, as, as he was uh, uh, speaking to us, you really have to have uh, an unstable isotope that will actually give away the nutrients and proteins. And clearly, uh, and, and of course, as they really disband, then you get radioactivity that comes out, and that's what we are looking at. And indeed, uh, 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 that is uh, very helpful, and uh, the uh, people from NEXA and NTP knows this very well, the chairperson of uh, 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 NEXA being here and the CEO of NTP, they will, they will tell you so. But I wouldn't, I, I, I'm not going to delve much into the radiation in itself, but what I will do so that I get straight to the uh, theranostics part of it is to tell you that you can have alpha, alpha radiation, you can have beta radiation, x-rays, gamma, and neutrons. And then as you can see clearly, an alpha one, which is the most potent one, it can be stopped by a paper. The beta one, you know, by a thin plate, and then the x-ray, you really need lead, and clearly, um, and then of course, uh, the water, it, it's, 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 it's what will stop the neutrons. So that, that, that is fine. I think it is important that uh, it is a bit dark, as, uh, as, as you can see, um, uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, although I'm wearing dark, as, uh, to acknowledge the late Prof Mayosi, you, you will see my teeth from time to time. So, <laughs> because, <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, if you've got that radiation that comes out, what happens then, it, it, it means you can label a lot of things. You can label biomimetics, you can label the ligands, you can label drugs, you can label a whole lot of antibodies, synthet synthetics, you can label nanoparticles, and then you can label cells. This is very important. As we do that, it means 
people that are here, we can actually work together with the engineers, we can work together with the biochemists, because we can label a whole lot of matters and then make theranostics what it is. Um, what do we mean by that? You take a specific ligand, you really target, and then as you target, then you take a radioisotope, and then if you take that isotope, it actually can then go into a specific place into an organ of a, an individual, depending on what is happening. So that is the diagnostic part of it. And then clearly, then as you go on, uh, you will then uh, be able to actually change the isotope, use a different isotope, uh, uh, and then of course, uh, as you use the different isotope, then you can treat, and that's what it is, theranostic. You use a molecule to diagnose, you use a molecule to treat. That makes you to save actually the uh, normal tissues, so you can target only the abnormal tissues, and that's very specific. So what I'm saying to potential collaborators that are sitting here is that this is the way to go, and this is the way we are going to actually minimize the side effects, and, uh, and, and I'll give examples thereof. As you can see, that's a repetition of what I've said. You've got various things. You can have isotopes that are for imaging. All of these are for imaging, and isotopes that are for therapy. These isotopes, then you can, as I have said, you can actually um, label them with various targets that will go to a specific place in a body, and then you need a ligand and a linker to link your isotopes. So if you've got this correct, you work with the basic sciences to get this correct, then you change your isotopes uh, from time to time, then you can actually be targeted, and that's very important. As you can see, that is the way it is. And then just to actually say that for us to be specific, then you actually have to uh, work with the people that are in the engineers to give you the molecule and then do the preclinical work with the mice and rats. And you would recall that the University of Pretoria has invested a lot of money into uh, uh, having the first uh, micro uh, PET CT. And this is what we are utilizing it for. NEXA, University of uh, uh, Northwest and, and, and University of Pretoria are actually the people that have taken this into the forefront of making sure that we can in fact have a, a good labeling uh, thing and then after that then we take it to the human beings and then therefore we can also change the imaging to the therapy. See it and then you treat it but then I will again elaborate based on the uh, scenarios that I've given and in that way then you are having the emissions that are really going out, and so it is. But nuclear medicine colleagues, it's not only confined to, um, you know, like cancer only. As you can see, it's entire body, we can actually work with the things in the brain, as I'll show you a brief example in the lungs, the cardiac and the skeleton, but it is specific and it will be taken out from the blood. I've seen uh, my brothers and sisters are here, they probably don't understand why I'm doing this and they don't know perhaps hopefully this time they can actually acknowledge uh, what is it that I am doing and that might be helpful. So what I am saying, <laughs> so, 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 the, 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 you, you are having measure, measures of screening and then we need any diagnosis although preventive medicine is the way to go so but you really need to have early diagnosis and early localization and as you do that then you can actually move beyond visibility so you'll see disease before you actually can actually see it with your naked eye and that's what makes it interesting so if you can see it before then then automatically then you can start to start to speak about a, a targeted nuclear medicine and that's what it is uh, and that's what it is important so if you move beyond the target and then of course then uh, it means then we can uh, speak about lesion detectability and if we speak about lesion detectability then we can speak about the precision medicine because you have actually seen it you you are not uh, speculating and then that is a theranostic so that enables you to move from trial and error because then you can actually action it and then as you do so then you can actually observe test and then you can have predictability and that's the way to go in so doing what you are going to see with the, the slides, you will see that really if you are having disease, you see it and then you end up with no disease and that's uh, the, the nature of the things. So as I have said, we do have a way in which we can apply uh, theranostics into tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, nobody actually expects us or think that we can use uh, tuberculosis into uh, this space, but indeed uh, uh, we can do that and it is possible to look and utilize nuclear medicine um, uh, to look into the extent 
of TB, especially the HIV TB, as you would recall and know that you cannot, in fact, uh, um, uh, have tuberculosis that is uh, seen from the X-ray if it is extra pulmonary. So nuclear medicine, in fact, can in fact detect the diseases very early and in fact speak on latent tuberculosis. As you develop newer drugs, then those drugs to see if they are go going to work well, then you can in fact utilize nuclear medicine to monitor the therapy, which is the next slide. But what we cannot do, of course, is to distinguish cancer from TB, and that's why it is important, and that's why nuclear medicine is a part and parcel of the future, and that, that is uh, needed, and that's important. As I have said, if you need to adjust your therapies, you need to actually utilize nuclear medicine. For instance, this patient seated here in this slide, you can see that there is pathology. The black spots are disease, but if you, and then if you utilize the conventional treatment of tuberculosis of treating for six months, you might actually not uh, have, have, have gotten it correct. This patient have had to be treated for nine months because this patient was responding slow. As you know, TB diseases, they can actually uh, have variability in themselves. They are heterogeneous. Some of them are slow, some of them are fast. So in, in that way, uh, the, 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 the difference is it's much easier and uh, uh, better to actually indeed utilize nuclear medicine to see where you are going. That, that's very important. And, and, and this is uh, something that has, in fact, opened a lot of avenues into what is happening with the new, uh, uh, new, newer researchers today. We started a bit earlier to actually say, in fact, before you even treat, if you've got two patients and the lesions are more than five, you can actually predict to say this patient is likely to be a non-responder. And that's really something very, very excellent. And that's something that can actually define very difficult cases. That, we think, in, uh, 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 although it's not yet into the utilizing nuclear medicine technique to treat part of it, but it will define the drugs that actually have to be stopped and the drugs that actually have to be utilized, and that's very critical. Yes, we actually have to work with different uh, tracers. Our unit and our department have started to use gallium citrate. Except, I won't go into the details of, the, of, of defining the technicalities of the tracers, but this type of a tracer is the one that we utilize normally. This one hasn't been utilized before in tuberculosis, and we were the first one actually to, to utilize that, and we can see what is a scar versus a non-scar. And this, this work is ongoing. We have had uh, several uh, PhDs into it, and then we will be having other work that are going on to this to try and see how can we utilize it, especially for those that are not fortunate to actually have it. Uh, to have the conventional PET imaging going on. So we have realized that you actually need uh, uh, new uh, drugs for, for detection of infection. Our place as well have said that we have to try and look into TB and other infections. And we see this is the tracer that was actually done and found that although UBI was labeled with a, a technetium elsewhere, but we labeled for the first time with Gallium at University of Pretoria. And that in itself can be able to see to show you infection versus inflammation. Inflammation won't take, but infection will take. Of course, there are challenges, but this, if we refine it better, then in fact, uh, it can be something that we really think it can help and be a step in the right direction of uh, doing what is important for, 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 for imaging. Our PhD colleague that is a sandwich program with a university in, 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 in Groningen, the Netherlands, is also utilizing imaging techniques for fungal infection. Most of you have got relatives and friends that are in fact uh, um, having uh, transplants, relatives and friends that are in immunosuppressed. Most of them will have fungal disease. If they have fungi, to treat fungi, it's a mission. Because fungi, you can actually treat it for many, many months, but to know when to stop, when to actually abandon the therapy, it's, it's actually not easy. So nuclear medicine is actually making an impact into that space, like this baby they here, the response was not so good and we had to stop and the baby had to really go for surgery. That is something very, very critical and, and you can actually do it also with, morpholo with morphological imaging. I do, I, a friend of mine, Zarina, knows that we normally actually mock each other to say that, I mean, definitely if you take your car to the mechanic, uh, I, I can say that because Zarina is a friend, if, if the mechanic is going to open the bonnet and look at the engine being clean, it's not healthy, you need to start the car. And that's what we do. We look at the function. We don't look how clean <laughs> it is. So, so, so that, 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 that is something that is very, very important. Morphology, morphology, morphology and function has to happen, and we really look at the morphology. And, and therefore, we can see where the problem is. Uh, 
So in HIV, we have a problem, uh, 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 MEC, as you would know. Uh, we have treatment failures. Yes, well, the, the, the Minister of Health, uh, and we have done well by putting a lot of patients on antiretrovirals. But as we speak now, we know that there will be patients that will fail. What are we going to do with these patients? And it's inevitable that not all the patients will actually uh, be responders. But even if they don't fail, if you see this scenario in HIV, you do have patients that actually um, will come and have ARVs. As you can see, then their viral load will go down and their CD4 will actually be uh, settled. But if they stop, you have a problem. So it will come back, which means the HIV is stopping and is somewhere else. And that's a very important aspect. So the HIV reservoirs, what do we do about those? What can we do something in nuclear medicine? Yes, we do have a great project that we are looking into that we are going to do. And really, um, uh, to really stop that rebound, it means again, what is it? You have to see it first so that you can treat it. Um, again, the seed seed concept is what we are sp speaking about here. As you can see clearly, we have a, 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 a tracer that we are trying to work with um, that, is, uh, uh, that if, if it really makes a, big, a breakthrough, we really are going to have something that perhaps can make South Africa very, very proud. Uh, if it gets to be successful in us labeling it, and we are busy with it, with uh, 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 the, the lab of Zievat, we will see then that we will change the imaging isotope by the treating isotope. Then we are going to fire it, see it, treat it, and then of course clearly we will be uh, following up to make sure that the, for skin therapies. Of course, this is going to be actually great. We have utilized this already. We have had three patients from South Africa. We didn't have this facility. We have had to actually fly them to Italy to go and utilize the equipment of Italy to treat them. And then, of course, why it's so important, you can see as you treat the isotope, the radio nuclide, the nuclear medicine part of it does not go through the dermis. It only ends up at the dermis. That's very important. So you're treating cancer. People that are, we are a sunny place, and people, fortunately, I'm not necessarily going to get it that easy, but Prof. Betton might have a square myself <laughs> because I'm slight, because then, I mean, if you do that, for instance, then we might actually tackle it much easier uh, uh, with uh, uh, targeted isotopes. And this is how for, uh, uh, it can go. And um, an example of that, you just have come to the department, in less than two hours, we have treated you. This will be a lesion. We see it. We clean it, we put a foil. We don't even come into contact with uh, uh, your skin. And then, of course, we put the isotope, rhenium. So I said the names of the isotopes don't matter much, but this is the results. Just one application. The application is a five-minute application of some sort, and then you, you, you stay so that you give it a chance to work. It can be 14 minutes, it can be two hours, and clearly after that, then you have uh, the, 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 the lesion gone. And that really painless, non-invasive, and then as I said, I mean, uh, uh, colleagues uh, from Germany that are here, uh, uh, really from Oncobita are, are really excited about this uh, issue that we are going to have here. Uh, uh, Shannon and Ma are here, and really we, we really are going to, 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 we are happy that you could come, and we are going to treat many, many patients into this. We can also save families with this. You don't have to cut it off. I mean, if, if the machine is not working, or we, we can actually infect, uh, 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 as you can see, uh, the pre and post. Of course, this is not necessarily from our work, but I mean, you can see clearly this is going to be very effective if really there is a pathology there. And this is uh, uh, the, the, the patients, again, an example of that. Before, in two weeks, this is how it will look like with that simple application that I showed you after a month. And then, of course, after two months, this patient, as we speak, the lesion is gone. That was just like that. And, and, and of course, most probably it won't come back. Another example. Now, what about the breast? One would like to show you this because this is how nuclear medicine we see ourselves. As you see Rubens, the work of Rubens and Rembrandt here. I mean, many of you are look, really looking at the beauty of the image, but in reality, this is what the colleagues are trying to show you. In fact, it's trying to show you Cancer, pure the orange and the lymph nodes here. But all of you are looking at this, <laughs> and, and clearly this is. <laughs> and similarly, you can see pure the orange is there. 
So it means that the old experts have tried to actually appeal to people, just like we are trying now, and thanks to the lecture that really look into us. If we see it, we can treat it well. And this is what we are trying to do, and clearly with this uh, patient, as you can see here, we're having this lesion. If we, if we can see it, it means then we can try and influence what should happen with uh, uh, that uh, uh, lesion because we know that if you give anti-angiogenetic medication, this patient will respond. And of course, uh, 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 Prof. Buch would know that at some stage I asked him money for some of the things of anti-angiogenesis. This is something that we would actually want. And of course, uh, Prof. Tian has uh, followed into uh, giving us uh, the, the funding for some of the things. Uh, uh, thanks to that, this, this, this work would actually be uh, going uh, forward nicely. So we will be taking this even in greater detail. No energy base working in uh, 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 hair tools as well, but we intend to actually take it further to actually see what we can do as you can see the lesion and clearing it up. So what will happen, we'll image it and actually convert and try and see if we can treat. But one, is, one of the questions is that working with antibodies might not be so easy to uh, see and that is what we will try and change. So to try and end up, then I'll end up with what uh, really uh, hurts the most, the prostate. So the, the, the prostate cancer, we, we really uh, uh, um, have been looking at it, have been working on it, uh, uh, let me see. We can image it with various things. And this is really have changed the, uh, the, the, the management of prostate cancer. It has changed it completely. It, it's really something that is good. We first started by seeing it and then by imaging it. As we imaged it, uh, we see there, there is always this subjective thing to say that if you've got Prof. Tian and myself that I will have a worse prognosis of prostate cancer, but that people have said, but we need to see it. And indeed, we scanned it. And indeed, as you can see clearly, this is a white prostate cancer patient. This is a black prostate patient. You can see indeed, it's very, very aggressive, very severe. And on a white patient, it is not. And, and which means there is something that we have to look into the epigenetics of it because then it is actually sub objective that we can see that. And it's not a question of the other patient has actually uh, presented late. In fact, it's patient that have presented at the same time at the same glycine scoring. If you look at them here, you can see clearly that the green, it's for the black cohort, they are always showing a higher, a higher uh, uptake versus the white cohort. Then this is something that really will actually change how we use and we can go into the epigenetics and the genesis that are here that we can in fact look into well. But we work with our collaborators to actually try and see that can we see recurrence when it's very early, still on the same part of it, so that we can treat it when it's early. And indeed, this is great work. We can even separate our imaging from the bladder. And indeed, we have done uh, several of these works. Maybe I should move on to the next slides. And then this is also one of an important one to say the conventional bone scans that we are doing at the moment are not helping us. This person is referred for something that is a bone scan, what we do in general in Notre medicine. But you can see it will actually lie to this person to say you only have this lesion. But if you do it with proper molecular imaging, such as PSMA, look at all the lesions that are missed. This is really amazing. When we submitted this paper, it was actually accepted within a day because the, the editor could see, in fact, that, wow, this is really stuck. So we are saying that we should replace the conventional imaging with a PSMA labeled with either gallium or a PET imaging. This is, this is great. You can see clearly. At least you know what you are dealing with and you know what to treat. But if you didn't see it, you're not going to treat it. So this person, they might operate, if, you, if they end up with this, they might operate here and if, if anything, do external radiation. But this person, they will, they will be surprised why he demises early because they've missed all the lessons and hence the importance of seeing it and treating it and that's very important. You can see the life expectancy of a prostate cancer if it has metastasized, it's really, you really don't go far. What is available, what is known to many people now, there are various drugs and this is from a urologist, not from ourselves, who has said so himself that these people's overall survival, it's just over four months. And this medication, uh, VC, they are very expensive. It can be something like a million, sometimes in two months. But if it's going to give you four months, we've got to really think about it. What do we do about such a thing? And one is not saying nuclear medicine is the be it all, but the combination perhaps with them. And what has happened is that then uh, colleagues have started 
with what we call lutetium PSA prostate specific membrane antigen. And as you can see, this is the work that we do have the same. The red is cancer, treated, no cancer. Similarly, cancer, no cancer. Of course, this is wonderful. But lutetium, it's very great. And then, of course, with uh, the NTP and NEXA being here, uh, the MD and the executives of NTP being here and Amersham, they have lutetium in South Africa. That is going to be something that we can do to many patients and to many people. And we are glad about it. We'll then have disease modifying to make sure how we can do it very, very well. So that's something that I wanted to say that this is doable. These results, we do have them. We can replicate them anytime, but it's a question of people knowing about them. But over and above that, how do we complement the beta emitter, the one that we have seen with lutetium, we can give the alpha emitters, which is also something that is making great waves in our department. And as we have had a, 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 a situation with the minister, uh, DVC and Dean uh, last time and the CEO about the alpha emitters with our European colleagues uh, donating uh, uh, the alpha emitters to us. We have started by, for instance, doing the theranostics by imaging and treating. This was the first in men to utilize a, 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 an alpha emitter called bismuth. And this cancer lesions that were there were gone. And this patient is actually still alive. And that is very, very excellent. But we, we had, had to abandon bismuth because it's expensive. And then we have gone on to uh, uh, actinium. Also an alpha emitter, in fact, the parent of bismuth, which is what, in fact, uh, uh, have to actually be uh, the state of the situation. Now, this alpha was, of course, uh, uh, something that is found by my friend, and we have just appointed him as an extraordinary professor in the UP, Alfred Morgenstern. He could label, he's a good radiochemist, and then he has transferred the skill to people like Otto Knussen from NTP and John C. Uh, 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 Mahapane and, and Cindy in our department, so we can actually now do this. And what, what do we do with this now? Um, we can now treat patients. Of course, what I want to caution is that for everything, there is obviously issues of um, safety that we are supposed to be aware of, and then I will not go into the details of what the labelings are, but just to tell you that we take precautions, we don't just treat any person, we make sure that all the things are actually uh, in order before we treat, and then we treat after every second month, and then I've got some of our patients, I've seen some of them, Mr. Lubono working in, that is uh, very wonderful, they can actually be the living a testimony of what is happening. We don't have side effects in the blood, we don't have uh, side effects that are in the uh, kidneys, and then of course, I have to move on, but we do have problems with the salivary glands that are being had. We are having some research projects that we are trying to see how can we protect the salivary gland. This is just a graphic way of showing that the response is very well. This, page, this shows you patients that have responded well compared to those that haven't responded very well. And of course, as you can see the percentages, this you don't just get with um, chemotherapy or external radiation. After just one injection of PSMA, VC, and MEC, really to get bone pain gone in 84% of patients, this is something else. This is something that is going to really change the management completely. And this is the result we do have. It improves the quality of life. This is an example of ours. See it. We have seen it. Person coming with almost two heads, distended abdomen. We treat it, and it is gone completely. And this person coming with 1,300 as the PSA, and now the PSA, you can see it's beyond detectability. And in fact, we presented this work in uh, the USA now. We won the international best abstract on it for the continent, and then, and then you can see clearly that this is wonderful. Uh, and then, of course, they included this work in the highlight lecture to say this is something to look forward to. And of course, with the South Africans, not, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it will give us those accolades. Um, but, uh, so, so, so uh, is, is this just a fluke? You can see that after 12 months, this, is, this, this person is still uh, in remission. And then the same situation, I'll move on. This person has got every bone has got metastasis. Every single bone. Left with about six slides. Every single bone has got uh, a metastasis. After we've treated this person, look at it. I mean, the difference is clear. 
we don't need to really say anything. This, you cannot treat this person with external radiation. And then this person is not going to be able to stand for chemotherapy because with all the bone marrow, it won't work. And then again, the C treated concept is what we are speaking about. And then again, guess what? This person is still again in remission. And of course, unfortunately, we have to play around to say, what about those that don't respond and looking at the mechanism that are different and we have done so and we are seeing how different the patients are. And again, the first thing men that we have done, that we have labeled together with our colleagues in Mainz, we can, in fact, see how we can do a different type of therapy using zolidronate, biphosphonate, which is a cancer-treating uh, thing. So what one is showing you is that instead of being in this situation and going to death when we have prostate cancer, we have to see it, and then we can use actinium to push the state of the situation backward to treat, and then we can actually make patients to be alive in that situation. So in concluding on this prostate cancer, we are saying that, colleagues, we do have the efficacy with C-treated -treat, treat concept. We do have tumor shrinkage, we have quality of life that is improved, but we do have side effects which we are working on and we are going to get there, but we know that it has to be a multidisciplinary effect. We have to do phase one, phase two trial, and we are saying to the DOH that we need to actually do that trial that will actually uh, show that it is working. It has to be multidisciplinary, but the patient has to be involved in the management and decision making. And then clearly um, with that, the track record and so on of what has happened. In fact, nuclear medicine department and at UP has then won a numerous, a bit, a bit big to be the nuclear medicine research center of the country, the main research center, the research infrastructure based on the, on the track record. And this is what we will do best. And in so doing, then we can actually help many patients. Many of you, of course, are not aware of the difference between equality and equity. This, this, this center that we are going to do, it will help. Why is it important? So that we can see if we don't make it available, this theranostic concept won't benefit this person. We need to have a facility such as the one that we will build that will actually make sure that this is for everyone. He can always be okay. He must just give it in to the other ones that don't need it, isn't it? So that is what we are appealing to you. And of course, at the end, if it's not going to be affordable, available, appropriate, or accessible, then the Theranostic won't work. Thank you so kindly. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you will agree that Mike did a great job in communicating a very difficult uh, topic. Uh, I think what is specifically important and uh, struck me was the transdisciplinary approach, the impact that the work has got on various fields, HIV, prostate cancer, breast cancer, we know the the work that they're doing on malaria. I'm a bit disappointed that you did not mention that. <laughs> but, um, but I think it's a message of hope. Uh, and uh, Mike, well done. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to invite one or two questions to Mike. Can I assist? Um, we got notice that uh, we need to save energy from ESCOM, so this is just to, to make sure that we're contributing from the university's side. Um, anybody from the audience that...